Um, hmm, good question. What's up, y'all? I'm Speedy, and this is 360 with Speedy Mormon. And today I am joined by Grammy nominated multi platinum recording artist Lil Baby. Baby, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Welcome to New York, bro. We're happy to have you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Last time I spoke to you was on a red carpet. This is years ago. This is maybe 2017, BT Hip Hop Awards. And at that time, you had on two watches. Right. And I said, yo, baby, why you got on two watches? You said, man, because I'd be late. <laughs> but today you was right on time. And I don't even got on no watch today. No watch today. Is, it, is this a new error for you, no watches? <clears throat> no, I wear watches every day. I just didn't put on one today. But no more two watches? No more two watches, for sure. When, when did that era end and just become one watch baby? Maybe like three years ago. So it, it ain't last that long. Maybe it lasted for about a year. And then it was like, fuck this, yeah, I'm over it. I'm over that. Yeah. So the new album, It's Only Me, yeah. is at this point it'll be out by the time the people see this. Uh, I'm wondering just before we really, really dive into it a little later, is this your best album to date? Of course. Do you make your projects intentionally in that way that they get progressively better, or do you think it's just a byproduct of you getting better? It's a byproduct of me getting better because it's not like, you know how some people been rapping for a long time, then they finally catch? Yeah. It's like I, kick, I caught when I was still learning how to rap. Yeah. So I blew up when I, was, I only had 10 songs in my name. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, over the time, I just got better. To a certain degree, you were kind of learning as you were going and mm -hmm. learning right in front of all in of us. To a full degree. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Uh, you said previously that your next album would be the first album that you actually write some right. stuff. Was that true? Did you wind up writing for this project or did I, you still punch in? I end up not writing. I end up just punching in. I find myself not having as much time as I thought I would. All right, so I want to talk uh, a little bit more about the album in a bit, but before all of this, before Grammy nominations and before platinum records and diamond records even, talk to me about your childhood growing up. What was young little baby like? Young little baby, young kid, determined to give him some money, a little hustler, depending on how young. You know, I wasn't no bad kid. I wasn't the best kid, though. Did you always have that hustler's mentality, or is that something that you kind of learned? And well, as long as I can remember. As long as I can remember, for sure. Seven, eight years old, I know I wanted some money. I went to a private school to like third grade, and then third grade. I don't remember never doing it. Yeah, I'll take that back. My mama, my mama boyfriend, he used to own a car shop. So I used to go over there with him. He'd give me like $10, $20, stuff like that. So I definitely had a little hustle back then, too. Yeah, you was always about your bread. For sure. Coming into school, though, you had the opportunity to skip two grades. Right. But your mom only let you skip one. Right. Why? Because she didn't want me and my sister in the same grade. Uh, I don't know why, but she didn't want me and my sister in the same grade. Well, I, ain't, I ain't know. It was like second and third grade. So I ain't probably didn't even know until after the fact. Were you just naturally smart, and, and that's why they wanted you to skip the grades, or what, what, what well, was the case? Yeah, I believe so. Just naturally smart. And did you grow up in church? Yes. Well, it's crazy. I went to church more when I was an adult than I did mm. as a child. As a child, I went to church with my mom like once a month, maybe. As an adult, I went to church every Sunday. It is what I started getting into. Now I don't go. I haven't been to church because it's kind of different now. You had a mom that was very present in your life always, and you know, there, you know, she would always just kind of pop up on you to make sure that she was okay, make sure right. that she was good. But I also heard that she would pop on you sometimes to make sure that you took your allergy medicine. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I got real bad allergies, and I just hate taking medicine. So I just deal with my allergies instead of taking the medicine. She just call, she just call the life on me. Your mom was also in the Marines. Yeah. Did that kind of influence or impact the way that she raised you at all? I don't think so. I, I figured that out like later on once I got older that she was in the Marines. She had stopped being in the Marines by the time I was born. Mm. I think she went for like two or four years or something. She ain't like, like, <clears throat> you know how like, people have like a first term? I think your first term be like two to four years or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. She ain't had like a career in the military. She ain't like re up on another term and another. Yeah. She, just, like, she got her shit in and was yeah, out of there. Yeah, exactly. 
And then after that, she worked at the post office. Right. Yeah, I remember she used to work at the post office for sure. She never drove like a truck or nothing, but I remember her putting on a uniform and going to, going to work. You said that your grandmother taught you how to be a leader. Right. I think that's a lyric on one of the new records. How so? Um, ever since I can remember when I was like three or four, my great, and I'm actually talking about my great grandma. Your great grandma. My great grandmother. She always like, tell us like, no matter the situation, we first class citizens. Then under being a first class. Say that one more time. <clears throat> under any circumstances, you're first class citizens? We're first class citizens. Okay. Right. What does that mean? Meaning like, for instance, you know, it's like a low class, middle class, first mm -hmm. class. And we citizens, so she's just like first class citizen. I don't know if she made that up or if, if that's a real saying or, or whatnot, but just I always had it in my head. I'm like a first class citizen. And with being a first class citizen, it's like I'm kind of like in the front. And not only am I a leader, I'm a follower. You feel me? Like, you gotta follow the lead. You gotta follow some kind of lead to be a good leader. Yeah. yeah. That's imperative for sure, man. It's definitely applicable to me. Have you been a leader since you was a kid, like in class I, and I school? Always, I always been a leader. Always. Always been a leader. Always been a leader. Yeah. That's a great tool. Lil Baby was a nickname that people gave you because you was always like one of the youngest people around, but was the nickname given to you by somebody named Wicked? Yeah. Yeah. Boy Wicked. <laughs> and now it's stuck ever since. Still ever since, yeah. Was that a name that kind of you knew that you wanted to be a rap name when you were going to become a rapper? Or I mean, did they just kind of give it to you like we already call I you mean, baby? It's like it's like I ain't I ain't need a my name, a nickname and a rap name. <laughs> so my nickname I just went on with my rap name. Yeah. That makes sense. It ain't make no sense for me to try to come up with a whole new rap name. Now, everybody I, who I know, everybody who I know, their name is their rap name. Like, I, ain't, I don't really know nobody who had came out with like a new rap name. Like a fresh beginning of... Yeah, like a new rap name. Because you already want people to know who you are when right. they hear you already. Yeah, and if you already have a little buzz in your hood... Right. You don't, don't want to change your name. Exactly. You might right. as well ride the wave that you've already built. Right. Now, as the story goes, hip-hop wasn't something you was really interested in. You was a hustler first. Uh, and you went away for a little while. Right. But while you were away, you connected with a, a, a person in particular. You had a 50-year-old roommate right. while you were in solitary confinement right. that, that you said that kind of changed the way you look at life in a certain degree. Right. Who was that and, and what was that like? Uh, this was an old guy. He was a Jehovah Witness. And that basically mean they, they live in like a godly way. Like everything they do is in, like, in the name of God. So... He just started like explaining something to me. He, he read the Bible like 14 times. Anything we'll talk about, he'll go, like anything we're talking about, he'll go to like the verse and the scripture in the Bible to, to make it relate to the situation. Our conversation. Exactly. So he, so he just like, <clears throat> then we in there for 24 hours a day. So we just sitting there talking. So he just, only thing he would talk about is God, like the Bible and stuff. So it's like, I got a real deal like, Imagine having a 24-hour teacher about anything for a, a long period of time. Yeah. It'll catch on. And, and in what ways do you think you kind of use that to change your outlook on life? I feel like a lot of times you, you, you kind of tell yourself you know which way you're going, but you don't really have no, really no guidance or, or know where you're going. I feel like he kind of he gave me an a, a insight of like where, I, where I really wanted to go. Mm. And he probably don't even know that or not. Damn. I hope he's out. I hope he's out too. I don't know how long. I don't know. He give me a vibe like he had a long time. Uh, like he was going to be in there for a Yeah, he's one of the old guys. He don't like, like they don't talk about their cases and stuff. And we don't ask him or nothing Yeah, like you that. just leave it. I asked him. He didn't tell me, matter of fact. He wouldn't tell you? Uh-uh. How come? It used to be something awkward if he don't tell you. but Like if they don't want to speak about it, some bad shit. More than likely. Man, he a good guy though. He said he just had one bad night. He don't tell me what happened that night, but he's just like he never got in trouble. Or never, he never said a curse word before. Really? Yeah, he's like one of them kind of guy. Never cursed before. Never said a curse just word. Had one bad. Sometimes that's all it take. One well, little bad moment. That's all it take. One bad decision. For you, uh, after you came out of prison, uh, you hadn't fully jumped into the rap game yet, and I think it was P or Coach K who were like, "Yo, in order for you to really make it." you have to remove yourself from the hustling life. You gotta right. get out of the streets. Do you remember your very last day hustling? Yeah, I don't remember like the very last day, but I remember the time period when I, when I told myself like I ain't gonna 
threw nothing to jeopardize my career because I started feeling like it was a career. First when I started rapping, it was just a, you know, fun thing, maybe, maybe not. But then once I see it was serious and I could get a deal and stuff like that, and I was just like, I ain't gonna do that no more. And it was easy for you to leave it behind? Sort of, kind of. Because I was making real money right. rapping, so. Definitely was easy once it got to that point. But if it, the, hard, the most hard part was like when I was making more in the streets than I was rapping. Because, you know, when you first start rapping, you don't make money for real. Yeah. yeah. At that point, you you know, I'm sure they're trying to put you through the Chitlin circuit and all of these small shows. Right, right. You ain't making nothing. Do you remember what the smallest check you ever got for a show? My first show was for like. Seven seven hundred fifty dollars. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Damn. Besides the free ones. Yeah. How many free shows hey, did you did? I did a lot of free shows. A lot of free shows. Not not too many. Not too many. I ain't gonna say a lot. Not I'll tell you that bad. I ain't do that many free shows now that I think about it. I went on like a promo run one time with Bigger Ranking. Then I quit I quit like mid halfway there. I ain't wanna do that no more, so I stopped doing it. Then you know, in Atlanta and stuff, just to get it going, I might have did one or two, because now that I think of it, I, I was demanding money off top. Yeah. Uh. So after doing these free shows, do you remember that feeling of getting your first ever check for a show? Your first I got my first ever before I did the free shows. Oh, okay. So yeah. you, did, you paid first, then you did the free shows. I just got, I had a little buzz on rapping, so somebody just tried it out for $750. I came, ended up probably having to pay $2,000 for everybody to get in. <laughs> Um, then we kind of like seeing what we had to work with, so we just did some free shows really to just keep it going, get it going. So your very first show that you got paid, you technically took a loss on For sure, it. for sure. Do you feel like that's important and it just kind of a testament to like investing in yourself and investing in your hustle? Sometimes you're not going to make money right away. A lot, a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of t you ain't going to make money out of every play. Or if you think that, it ain't gonna be, you ain't going to be too successful. You gotta know. Sometimes you ain't gonna make nothing. Depending on what the thing is, it's like, is it like, what kind of relationship in the mix of it, maybe, or mm -hmm. what it mean to me, if it means something to me, things of that nature. As the story goes, you continue to blow up, and at this stage, you're arguably the biggest rapper in the game. Do you remember the first time you got recognized by someone that surprised you? Whether it was like, a celebrity or like yeah. an actor Me, or something. Meek Mill, he was the first person to post my mixtape, like the first rapper. And I already was like a super fan of Meek, you know, like he was that nigga. And he posted my mixtape, I'm like, damn, saying that I ain't even see it. Somebody told me, like, you seen Meek post your mixtape? And he was following me. I followed him, he's like first rapper ever, just besides like Thug, them and stuff, mm -hmm. like first rapper. Really? Sure. That's a big cosign early on to get posted sure. by Meek, like out Definitely. the gate? Definitely. But I remember, I was laying on the bed with a girl on the condo. The condo. She showed me, matter of fact. Word. I was kind of excited though. I, I think I even called one of my men. I'm like, you seen me post the tape? And they went to it, shit like that. Damn. I hope you still have that screenshot somewhere of that very first time. Man, I'm so bad with phones. I mean, I, I lost a lot of good memories. Stuff I really wish I had. I've heard you say that there are some things that you like to do now that you like to do just to keep you grounded. Like, there are things that you can have other people do for you, but you do it to help you still feel kind of normal, whether it means like walking into a store and seeing the people's faces and reactions. Are you still doing that type of stuff? To a certain extent sometimes, or certain places, certain times of the day I will. Or, or, or if I feel like I've been in the house too long, I will. Yeah, it'd be more so, I just think I just wanna be regular. I don't really think like, I'm gonna go in the store because I know I'm gonna change somebody's life. Yeah. Or like, somebody gonna be happy to see me because I'm really hoping that I can ease in and out without nobody seeing me. Yeah. Right. Do you for, do you do you miss the time when you were able to do stuff like that? Because it happened so quick. Like a lot of people, they kind of ease into fame and they kind of get accustomed to it. And for you, it felt like it was just off and then it was on. Right. Exactly. That's exactly how it was. Off and then it was on. Yeah. Do you miss the, the days of of it being off when you kind of just not not the success portion, but just being able to live your life in a way where everything never, was so wild. I never. I never really. Even though it's on a bigger scale, but I, I feel like I, I already was on that scale. Mm. Now it's on a, a way bigger scale, of course, but I, I always feel like it was there anyway. I'm young, hop out, pockets full of money, stuff like that. 
So people are already attention on me, playing loud music, nice car, stuff like that. And I'm already like a kid. So people are already like watching me anytime I come outside, for real. In the documentary Untrapped, you speak about the passing of Marlo, obviously rest in peace. And we also just lost PNB Rock, somebody who you were touring with early sure. on in your career. I had a real good relationship with PNB Rock. And I actually was in LA when I heard the news. That was definitely unfortunate. Like, I ain't gonna say it's getting worse and worse, but I, I know it's already real, but it'd be like a, another wake up call. Mm. Like, all right. Cause like you said, I do that same type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be somewhere at a restaurant, just me and my people or something like that. So it kind of made me open my eyes a little bit more and kind of start thinking like, yeah, it might be time for me to stop going in places and stuff, just to lower my chances of certain stuff happening. Do you feel like to a certain degree because of all of the loss around you and because of the community that you're from that you almost feel desensitized to death? I ain't gonna say I'm desensitized, but I got a good way of how my feelings. Yeah, I mean, my emotions. I feel like this this don't be the platform for that. Not my Instagram, not my Twitter, mm -hmm. not my name. Whenever I have personal times, I just have them to myself. I feel like that's like personal stuff to me. Yeah. Uh, I saw a tweet the other day from from Doug. He said, "Wham, if you don't drop in three days, <laughs> you ain't my brother." Or what do you say? We ain't brothers. Right. Uh, how's Doug doing, man? I, I I'm sure you've spoken to him. He doing great, man. He got his head here high, for sure. And how about Gunner? Same with them. They're in great spirits. They'll be on soon. And how are you feeling? I mean, these are people that are close to you. I imagine that's got to take a, a, a toll on you to a certain degree. I go back to like the same thing you were saying like about the death and stuff. I ain't desensitized, but it's like I've grown accustomed to learn how to handle these situations. Khaled is somebody who you collaborate with a lot. Right. It seems like y'all got some sort of winning formula. You link up, you get on his album, the song is out of here. Right. What, what, what's, what is, is it, is, does it feel like a formula or is it just that it's a seamless work environment? What, what is it? It's just a seamless work environment. Kelly, he's real smart. He know how to do it. He know how to make it. He know how to make, make it comfortable for you to rap. Well, me. He may know how to make it comfortable for me to rap. And he kind of get what he need out of me, out of me. Yeah. Uh, I did a quick Google search. It says your net worth is $5 million. All right. I heard a little teaser from, or, or on the album, you say something about it. You say like, uh, Google says my net worth is five million, but I got that shit in cash. What? Do you look up your net worth and laugh at that, or? or? No, nah, I just probably went, went, um, most of the time when I say something in my song, I probably had a conversation or something like that or something about it. So um, my son told him that, my son told me that one of his friends at school told him that he looked up my net worth. And it was five million. So it just was on my mind at probably the time. That, at the time. Yeah. How inaccurate is that figure? <laughs> so you do laugh at it. <laughs> I don't think nobody on that Google network is real. It's correct. It's accurate. Yeah. Nobody. I'm sure you're well past that mark. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you heard a billionaire say, I don't have a hundred billion yet, so I can't chill. Like I can't stop. For sure. Who was it that said that? Um, I forget his name. One of my New York buddies, friend. He just told me because I had on, on me. I said I, got, I ain't got a hundred million. I can't chill yet. He just telling me he play that part. He said every time he hear that part, he go back. He like he don't got a hundred billion. Yet. He can't chill yet. That was just crazy to me. So that know let me know. Still wasn't gonna be no chilling at a hundred. Do you have a new goal figure in mind? Like, you know, people's goal post moves. I remember Gotti saying he wanted a hundred mil, but now he's aiming for more. Right. Is your goal to be a billionaire? Or even beyond, it's just. All right. Billionaire is like the max right now mm -hmm. for anybody in the world. So by the time I'm trying to get me a billion, if they start being trillionaires, I, I, I'm sure I'm gonna be wanting to be a trillionaire. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm shooting for the, for the max. Yeah. Whatever the maximum is, is, is where you're. The at. max for me, that's what I'm shooting for. You say on the song Frozen, you say I've been, I've been in the Hamptons chilling with Mike Rubin and Hove, and you, it, it seems you've been spending a lot of time around billionaires. Uh, what's that been like? Do they, do they inspire you? What, what are you learning from, from being around these people? I don't know. 
I try to learn the most. Like, I ask questions all day. You know? So just like around being around those type of people, I learn a lot of different stuff in business for the most part. Business and like how to spend money when I get my money. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, your billionaire, they live different. They go to certain places where you never even heard of or look cut places in a cut that you go past a whole lot of times and never knew it was there. Yeah. Just different little stuff like that. Stuff I see is mind blowing. Everyone knows this famous story of you gambling and turning $60 into like 100K or some shit like that. But gambling seems to be like something that you're just kind of blessed with. Because right. recently I heard a story about you in Vegas right. on the Baccarat table. Right. What, what happened? You wound up running up a, a, a ticket over there? I really want two million. But I, I win all the time. I lose all the time, too. But, like, I don't record it and stuff. Right. And this was, like, my last day of tour. So, like I was saying, I wanted to have fun. So I had a lot of guys with me. So one of the guys recorded. But I would have never, I would have never got out if it was up to me. I just feel like if I'm lucky today, I'm lucky. If I'm not, I'm not. Because Baccarat only like a 50-50 game. It don't take too much thinking. And it's just A or B. Right. You can just get lucky, A or B. And when you did hit that big win, the rumor was that you kind of blessed the people that were around you, your mans that was there. Did you, you hit them off with a little something? Yeah, for sure. I'm just having fun. You know what I'm saying? If it's a bad day. I lose, I lose by myself, though. There we are, man. Mm. The only time I've ever publicly seen you lose a bet was against Black Sam. Do you remember being in the... In nah, the I, I, ain't, I ain't lose. Black Sam was on my team. Was and it? Black Sam won. Wasn't you guys in the in the marathon store with Nip? Yeah. And he shot what what, what was, was happening? Some dude who was saying he could shoot the shot for ten thousand. And I'm like, bet, but I'm like, I ain't gonna shoot. I'm gonna get Black Sam to shoot. So Black Sam shot for me, the other dude shot for ten thousand. Black Sam hit the shot. We won ten thousand, split it, split it up. I won five, he won five. Why didn't you wanna take the shot though? I wasn't going to make the shot. <laughs> and we in Black Stam's so It's his goal. I know he can make the shot. Right. Yeah. Maybe that's a good skill to have in gambling, knowing when you're just not going to win and putting it in somebody else's hands. That's a great skill to have, too. If you can get that down pat. See, but that's the thing. Like, in other things, I don't think I'm not going to do it. Mm. I think I could do it. Yeah. Gambling, you know. You know when it's your day and when it's somebody else that you put the power in their hand. Right. You were spending a lot of time with Drake recently. We seen him gambling incredible amounts of money on his live stream. Uh, do you guys ever gamble together? Yeah. That's actually how I know Mike Rubin. Through Drake? Just one night everybody was in Bahamas. And we all gambling together. But of course I know Drake. I ain't know Mike Rubin. I, like Drake, James, Drake, Meek Mill, James Harden. I don't know Mike Rubin. Baccarat, matter of fact. In the Bahamas? Yeah. What do you remember about that day? I lost about 600000 Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Is that the worst day you've ever had in gambling? Nope. You've lost more than that. Unfortunately. But shit, fuck it. Maybe you, you, you lose, you win it back. Lose, win it back. You, they say you're going to lose more than you're going to win, but over time, you can't even remember, though. That's right. the crazy part. You don't even know if you're up or down. You don't even know. You said that the situation that happened with you in Paris made you realize you need to become bigger globally because you want the police to be able to recognize you. Not you just that, but just, you get what I'm saying? Not you just the police. I just feel like I need a bigger global presence. I'm not saying if I get bigger global, I can't go to jail. I don't right. believe that, but I just know I need a bigger presence. Do you feel like you're not big globally, though? Yeah, but I could be way bigger. I mean, the world is so big, we only in America. So everywhere, you feel me? If I could just get a, a couple countries, not yeah. continents, just countries, you feel me? Yeah. Continent would be great, though. Yeah. I'm wondering, how much time do you spend on the internet these days? Are you scrolling the gram? Are you on Twitter? Are you? I don't do a lot of scrolling. I got a little fake page I scroll on there. <laughs> um, but for far as like everyday life, what's, it, what's going on and stuff, I don't be hip unless somebody around me show me. So your man's be putting you on. Yeah. Just like that initial Meek Mill post, somebody else had to put you on to let sure. you know. Right. I wonder, has anybody ever put you on to the memes about you when people be like, man, 
my men support little baby more than they support me. Yeah. Or they be like, wish it happened. More people wish baby happened. I, I really feel like that's some hang shit. Because to speak on somebody else about something somebody not doing for you, it's mm. like some hang shit. Yeah. Mm. That's a good way to put it. Because I be seeing people that be like, man, my bro ain't wish me a happy birthday, but it's some hang shit. Post a little baby happy birthday. It's some hang shit. Maybe they just need to strengthen up their relationship then. Man, you need to stop being a hater. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. For sure. When asked why you were so humble, you've said that you were humble because you've seen arrogant people lose it all. Right. What does that mean? When, or what do you mean when you say you've seen arrogant people lose it all? I just don't feel like the favor is in too much arrogance or, uh, right, I don't think the favor is in too much arrogance. Mm. Meaning like, I try to let my good outweigh my bad. And to me, if you, a certain amount of arrogance is like rude, like disrespectful, like, so that means you kind of like got to do people dirty. Mm. And I ain't really fun of that. In the documentary, I want to talk about fatherhood for a second. In your documentary, Untrapped, you said that you didn't want to be a holiday dad. Right. Um, and that, you know, you wanted to make sure you're very present in your son's life. And, and, I, and the line that you said I thought was interesting was, I could fuck up and he could become like me. Right. What do you mean by that? Do you not want your son to be like you? Uh -uh. I want him to be successful. Well, I don't want him to be like me. I have to go through what I went through to get to where I'm at, because I ain't had to go through this. You know, it's a whole lot of other ways you can go to get to where I'm at. Do you realize, though, that your kids are going to have a very different upbringing and lifestyle than you? They already do. Like, you, you would come home from school and shit might be on the front lawn because you're getting evicted, and they'll probably never have to experience anything like that. Right. They're going to grow up as rich kids. Right. Do you think about that? And, and For sure. Definitely. They're going to have the best of both worlds because even though they're rich kids, their daddy was like, I really come from there, my family and all that. So they still got cousins and stuff where they can still go to both worlds. Mm. My son know all the little kids in the neighborhood from my hood and stuff. He play with them and stuff, even though he never stayed out there. Nah. He play with them. I take him out there. Right. I used to. Like He had parties. They had parties. He go. He talk on the phone with them all the time, stuff like that. So he got a little... A lot of hood sense. It's important for them to have that balance, though, so that Definitely. they know what the real world is like. Definitely. It seems you're very, very present in your kids' lives. Um, Not as present as I like to be, because with my career right now, I ain't really at home. I ain't home like I want to be. Yeah. But you, you're on the phone with them a lot. Every time, at least, again, and I don't see much of you publicly, but when I do see videos of you and shit, it seems like you're always on FaceTime with them, calling in, making sure they're good. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them every day for sure. Like, for sure. That's a part of my day. I haven't talked to neither one of them today because I've been running. So when I leave out of here, that's what I'll be doing. Is that because of the relationship that you had with your dad and you was like, man, I don't want it to be that way? Or I don't even think of it like that. Because I ain't had that kind of relationship with my dad, and we ain't had FaceTime back then anyway. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we did, you know, maybe everybody relationships with their parents be a little better. That's like back point. then, everybody just gone, there's no social media, no nothing. House phones, barely cell phones, so it's like way different then now, just to like have that access to be able to like FaceTime mm -hmm. and stuff. Cause you, cause with FaceTime, you could be there without being there almost, in yeah. a sense. It is way different from just having a phone conversation. Right. Mm. They want to show you some shit. You can look at it. They can see your face. See what I'm doing, Ashley. Know if I tell you I'm at work, I can show you I'm at work, see what I'm doing. Like, it's a whole different ball game now with the phones and things, technology. Having been in a high-profile relationship, what is the key to co-parenting for you? Uh... The key to co-parenting, to me, is co-parenting. It's knowing that that's what we're here to do, is co-parent. Mm. You know? Everything else aside, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we co-parent. Yeah. I think that's the key. Your kids' names are Jason and Loyal. Right. 
What does loyalty mean to you? Why why did you name your son that? His name Loyal. Loyal, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, what does loyalty mean to you, and why did you name him Loyal? Uh, loyalty means to never go against what you believe in or what you come from or where you come from. That's what loyalty means to me. And why I name my little boy Loyal is because I don't know a lot of loyals. It is like a good name. I've never met a loyal in my whole life. Right. Did you like, yo, I want to name him some different shit that... Right, but not nothing like too like ghetto or nothing, and nothing but I want him to have a uh, special name. Yeah. yeah. I heard a bar that you said something along the lines of people think we're ghetto until we pull up and their kid is a fan of me or something like that. Right. What, what, what did you mean by that when you said it? Uh, I was saying in the airport. People people see us, we be deep, 10, 12, deep, ski mask stuff. People think we get on and stuff. Then they ask, like, who is it? And somebody tell them, little baby. Then they ask their children, like, who is little baby? Then their children go crazy, and next time they see me, then they approach us different. Mm. Is that a funny situation to you? Because people yeah. judge you from afar, and then you, like, ask your son. It's you actually know. cool. It's actually a cooler feeling. Yeah, it happens all the time. I remember the first time, but it happened all the time. Like, all the time, all the time. At the airport specifically or any- like everywhere? Because sometimes I'm dressed down like this with my hood on and stuff, so you're like, you think it's me, but I can slide by you or something. Mm-hmm. So I can tell how people act before they know it's me. Then once they realize it's me, the way they act, it's, it's all it's fun. Different. Funny. Do you yeah. laugh at it? Like, yeah, man, definitely. I get, very- a little, I get a little kick out of it. Do you feel like you've mastered your craft yet? Not at all. I just say my craft as a rapper, I feel like I'm 20%. Only 20%? Only 20%. Why, why do you say, what about the other 80? I got to get there. What do you feel like that 80% consists of? What, what are you not, like, where are you not where you want to be at yet? Like, knowing the backside of music, knowing, like, the instruments, knowing, like, when to go high, when to go low. I want to really, like, learn about the real music. You know what I'm saying? Like history of music, like all that type of stuff. Then that'll put me at like 40, then like, once I get my stage performance all the way down, Pat, that'll get me at like 60, then, you know, just stuff I I know as an artist, like, yeah, I ain't even nowhere near where I wanna be at on that yet, stuff like that. So if you've achieved all of this, which is incredible, right. at just 20%, what do you feel like 100% Lil Baby looks like? Like massive, super massive. Maybe something I've never seen before. Do you have an idea specifically of what that might look like? I have no idea. I ain't have no idea what this look like. But I still was thinking, like, you know, I'm going to be the biggest. Or even though I don't know what the biggest is, or I ain't comparing myself to nobody. It's just the, the thought and the, and the ambition I got. Like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the biggest. Not even saying I'm going to be better than you or bigger than you. I just, for me, like, I'm the biggest me. You know what I'm saying? So then what's, in, what's inspiring you right now to get to that point? Is it... That 80% that you're trying to, right. is that what's kind of motivating you? Right, that's for sure what's motivating me. <clears throat> How often you think about that 80%? Now that I'm doing it, that's what I'm saying. I always want to be the biggest. So it's like I want to master my craft. Uh, talk to me lastly just about the album. It's only me. At this point, the album will have already been out. Uh, did you have a favorite song coming into this project that you knew was going to be the one that you would listen to the most? No, I got different vibes and different days. And then I know from just doing this for a little minute, I get I got such a diverse fan group that like certain songs hit certain people different. So different days, different song. What do you feel like this album will mean for your legacy? Do you feel like this will take it from that 20% maybe to 25 and, and so on? Definitely. Um, me mastering my craft don't really got nothing to do with my albums. It's more like on some personal stuff. But I feel like this album definitely will broaden my horizon for sure. Even though I'm a big deal, I still, everybody don't know about me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you do drop and you do got promotion, you do got interviews like this, some people might come across this interview and never had heard of me before. Right. You feel me? Like, the whole world don't know who I am yet. You know what right. I'm saying? Are you still on that, no one else can hear me in the studio, you just like to be by yourself? Yep. Why so? I don't know, I just feel more comfortable rapping to myself and the engineer. Because if I feel like people can hear it, I'm more conscious of what I'm saying instead of just, Landing flow.
Mm. This is your first solo release in two years, is it? Yeah, you have a job done by yourself. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Do you feel nervous? Do you feel excited, anxious? I feel excited. I, 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 I ain't anxious. We well, are anxious too. I'm anxious for the people to hear. Like, get a piece of it. They've been waiting on it too. You know, I, I want to deliver for them. Do you feel like you've been counting down the days? Like, yeah, all right, for sure. more days, three more. Yeah, I'm counting down now. We got a couple more hours. A couple more hours until the album is out. I guess, lastly, what, what do you want the people to know about Lil Baby moving forward? Um, mm, good question. I want people to know I'm really just getting started on my journey. Like, no matter how big I may seem or how big I am, like, I'm just getting started. You're still in the early phases a little bit. in the early phases a little baby, for sure. And you might bring something to the game that we ain't never seen before. That's my goal. That's the goal. All right, little baby. I appreciate you taking the appreciate time. Appreciate you, bro. For sure.